Hello, welcome to Anson's TV. My name is Jack Duxbury, Heath the Maltese Falcon. And we're in the BIC in Bournemouth. And I'm going to check out, it might be really boring, it might have some use to you, but I'm going to talk you through what I'm using on this James Arthur gig I'm doing at the moment. Boom! Okay, it's pretty simple. I'm a pretty simple guy and I use pretty simple gear. I've got, I'm rolling with the Nord Stage 388, the brand new one, and the Nord Electro 6D. Also, I'd like to mention that I just used one sustain pedal for both, and I will show you later on in the video how I set that up. Uh, but first, I'll just talk about why I'm using these two, and maybe a few things that if you own these, it might be of some use to you. Uh, I, I, th these are new to me for this gig. James actually bought these for the gig, so it's been nice that I've done some videos on those. Check those out on the channel. But uh, let's get into some sounds. A real big lifesaver uh, has been this second screen. If you come in, Falcon, you see that I've got uh, this, this screen here. And it's been the first time of me working with it professionally. And I must say there's a patch on here called Soft Pad that has saved my life. And I'm going to turn it up and you can hear that one. I'm using this for all the transitions and pretty much behind most of the pianos. been doing is adjusting the cutoff on there a little bit sometimes because there's bits in between the show where we don't like silence so if I play the patch as it starts that's one for a song called Falling Like the Stars and this is how it sounds That's behind, that's behind a lot of the patches in there. Uh, let's look at how I ch am changing patches as well. This is going to be pretty boring, okay? So come with me, Falcon. Uh, if you see, I have a MIDI cable on the back that I'm sure we'll cut to that goes, this is MIDI out of here into the MIDI in at the back. And that allows me to do two really, make use of the Nord in a really powerful way, I think. The first one is just changing patches. So if you see, whenever I change the patch on here, it'll change correspondingly up there. Really, and the way to do this is when you know what songs you're doing, make sure you make a patch for every song on both keyboards. Just go for it. Even if I'm not using this keyboard, if you see up here um, on a song like Breathe that he's got up there, I'm just playing piano. That's the bright grand. I still am using the bright grand. I've used it for years and I'm still using that for most of the piano. But up here, I've got nothing on there. But it just means, and you do that by uh, using the external section. And this is a big part of, if you're a Nord user with multiple keyboards, that's where you want it. So on the Nord Stage 3, it's here. And what that allows me to do is, so as I'm changing, you can see the patch changing. If I go to rewrite the stars and I go shift external, you'll see that on the external settings for panel A, which is I'm on, and you can do one per panel, panel B, I'm on MIDI channel 14. This is set up to listen to MIDI channel 14. So what that gets is, it also gets this information. So you go, it says send on load, and it, that's on. 
These are all things you have to turn on. But you turn that on, and then if you have a look here, you might miss it, but on the new Nord Stage 3, there's actually three pages to these external assertions. PC, program change, so it's going to change the patch, and that sends out four. So that means it loads, sends it on load when I turn it, sends out over middle ch MIDI channel 14, the number four, and it knows to change that. And what's really cool is when I'm changing set lists, because these are tied together with those patch, uh, those PC program change messages, messages. It means that uh, my tech or myself, when we change the set list, I only have to change the, the bottom keyboard because they're intrinsically linked. So it's really handy. And it's just a great way to not have to change set lists on both keyboards to make sure that you know, if you're in between, I've, I used to do it when I didn't do this. I would change on the bottom but forget the top, and it's a disaster. Anyway, let's have a listen to some of the sounds that I'm using, and uh, that might be a bit more interesting. Okay, here's a patch for a song called Sermon, which comes pretty early on in the set, and it starts off with me having to play to the crowd uh, whilst he's talking. So I have a Wurlitzer with some trem and chorus. Uh, I've got some tremolo on the piano. There's actually chorus on the synth patch behind it, so I find that makes it a bit wider. Uh, I've also got an analog mode ping pong delay to give me a little bit of stereo. Uh, it's nice on the in ears sometimes to have a bit of width. And I'm also sending the Wurlitzer through the small amp model with a bit of drive and the bottom taken out. Touch of compression, bit of reverb. This is what it, that sounds like. Sometimes, if he's taking a bre uh, breather, I'll ride the uh, frequency on it here. Into a song start or something like that. And so when it's, the song kicks off, because of the seamless transitions in it, I just hit panel A and I'm into the verse. That is uh, the Bambino upright, that, uh, and what's so good is the EQ on here, you can hear there's almost no bottom in it. And that's because on the record it's full and low end, but they're so big, these speakers, that bottom end sometimes isn't your friend, so it's really, bottom end isn't your friend. It's really handy to take the bottom end out of there. And uh, in the same way, they, it goes back to a breakdown, where um, it, I have this synth patch up here. This is what's nice about the 6D. It's not just vintage keyboards. Here's a profit sample, so it goes. <laughs> and then it goes into the Dre bit, boom, 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 boom. And then uh, I can play the daps of it. And that little exchange there between the two Nords is why I love Nord. You see that I went from this patch into some hits. And whilst that's playing, I can switch the pattern. So you can keep that smoothness that people are looking for with the seamless transitions, combining it in MIDI, also not having to lift my foot up to go to another sustain pedal, which just brings us to the sustain madness. Follow me. Okay, here is the super secret sustain pedal trick. I've got a standard sustain pedal down here. And you see a lot of guys, and I've toured with a lot of other guys that have multiple sustain pedals, and I'm just like, how do you, how do you keep it smooth when that's all going? And I, I found it through here, the external section. Basically, any patch you've got, if you're out there, so I've got a, just a simple grand piano patch here, okay? Uh, what song are we gonna do? Finally Feel Good. Also, this really shows off the new piano filters that I hadn't used before. If I take that off, 
So this is no filter. And then we found that was a bit pokey. So I just whacked on the soft filter. Now on the stage two, I'd have to use the EQ, but that my EQ is still free, so that's really handy. Back to the sustain. Turn on the external section. So that's off now. And then the key is, when, when you turn it on, Falcon, you see there's all these lights. What you need to do is you need to shift and press that till the lights go off. It's still on because that's off. It's on, but now it means that the external section is not controlling any exterior keyboard zones. Because if that's on, I'll just trigger the notes on here. So make sure that's off. But what still gets through is this message. And you can see here, because sustain pedal. So the other thing to do is just check and make sure that you're sending sustain pedal information. So shift, sustain pedal, and that allows me to control the top. And you think, why? Why would you do that? Because a lot of the time I have to play at the same time. and it keeps everything really smooth when you're using one pedal. You can't do that with two, I promise. Thanks for having this little tour around my keyboards. I hope it's been all right, and I hope it's been of some use. We're gonna have some other videos from here just to change it up, because we're always locked in the studio, aren't we, Falcon? That's right. So to play you out, I'm gonna play you out with James Arthur's uh, song that you probably don't know, but some people know it. And I'm gonna play you out, because I've got videos as well on the channel. Maybe they'll be linked in there about uh, how to play C major, but this is an example of how you can take that method onto stages where you really shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. But hey, this, the song just moves between a B flat, an F, a G minor, and an E flat. But using our super secret method, which is point at the B flat, go to the nine, so the C, thumbs on F, pinky on F, we can play Say You Won't Let Go by James Arthur. I'm going to play you out. Thanks for watching. Just move the bass note with it.